In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Yesterday I began these uh, contemplations. Uh, good morning for those in Los Angeles or in uh, North America, whether on the east or on the west coast, or whether you are in many, many different uh, parts of the world, uh, in Australia, in Europe, uh, in Egypt, or uh, the UK. Welcome to all of you. Uh, I've decided to call this uh, uh, period of contemplations Coffee with Nuggets of Wisdom. Uh, so we'll be starting by looking at some of the monastic fathers and mothers of the early church and some of the wisdom that they teach us. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I'd like this to be more practical, uh, not going into deep theological discussion, but how it can apply. How do these fathers and mothers that lived, lived this ascetic life out in the desert uh, many, many centuries ago, how do they rela relate to us living in society um, today? So that, that's uh, the general discussion that we're having. And we're looking at some of the teachings from this beautiful book uh, that I mentioned uh, yesterday called Give Me a Word, the Alphabetical Sayings of the Desert Fathers in the popular patristic series from SVS Press. So that's uh, where we are reading from. But be, before we get into that, uh, talking about Coffee with Bishop uh, Surreal, our main podcast. So we have tomorrow uh, launching part two of our discussion with Debbie Armanius on Exodus Youth Works and Innovative Ministry for Youth in Crisis. And uh, I would suggest that you don't miss out on uh, that episode. Even if you enjoyed the first part last week, I can assure you that um, this second part uh, brought me to tears, actually. Um, what Debbie had to share about that ministry and how she was able to reach out to so many young people in many different crises that were going through their lives. And she speaks about knowing uh, about three or four Coptic girls that had got deeply involved uh, in prostitution and brothels and how she was able to work with them and she spoke about one in particular a wonderful young lady she was able to um, befriend one of these brothel owners bring her bottles of water you know with the logo of exodus and so on uh, and befriend her and through this began to be able to get access to this young Coptic girl without being a threat on the institution. And by the grace of God, over a lot of prayers and hard work over two years, she explains how she was able to bring her back into the church and to the bosom of Christ. Uh, amazing stories. And then part three next week, we have a second guest with Debbie, and that is the welfare manager, uh, Kiro Salib. So that is a very interesting episode as well. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is because I think it's important that we have a wide variety of guests on Coffee with Bishop Serial, each one coming with uh, different uh, ministry, different thoughts, uh, all within uh, the Coptic faith and Coptic church. Uh, and Christian faith in general, and we learn from each one of them. And I myself is learning so much from every one of the guests, and I'm really enjoying being able to present something that I hope will be of some benefit uh, to many people across the globe. Um, but after this uh, two part uh, three-part series is completed, the week after that, I just want uh, to prepare you for what is coming next. 
My guest is uh, someone I've known since I was a general bishop uh, in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and that is Phoebe Farag uh, McHale uh, from New Jersey. And she has published this beautiful book um, called Putting Joy into Practice, Putting Joy um, into Practice. And uh, the subtitle is Seven Ways to Lift Your Spirit from the Early Church. It's published by Paraclete Press. You can purchase it from uh, the publisher or you can find it on uh, uh, Amazon and any fine uh, bookstores. But I'm telling you about this because uh, it's not a, a long book. It's actually a very beautiful read. It's only about 175 pages, but it has a lot of practical tips from, again, some of the early church fathers, her uh, spiritual life and many stories from her family as well, and people that she has come into contact with, of especially these days, you know, all these difficulties that the world is going through, that each individual person is going through all these tribulations. How do we actually live joyfully? And what's the difference between joy and happiness or leisure or pleasure? Uh, she speaks about all these things. So I would encourage you to, you have a couple of weeks, you know, pick up this book from somewhere uh, and read it and prepare for our discussion. It will be a two-part discussion with uh, Phoebe, um, she is a wonderful writer, and uh, uh, you know she has studied writing uh, throughout her career and uh, studies. And I won't tell you what the seven ways that she mentioned, so I don't uh, spoil the book for you. But pick up this beautiful book, "Putting Joy into Practice: Seven Ways to Lift Your Spirit from the Early Church," and uh, we'll be discussing this uh, in a couple of weeks. So I like to introduce new books whenever I can, and I want to encourage you all to read as much as you can. The more we read, the more we get into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We become more enriched in our spirituality, and then for those that have families and are married, then you can also enrich your children, you know, and uh, pass on this rich heritage of our Coptic Orthodox faith to your children and to the generations to come. And we'll be talking a little bit about this today. So I want to go back to this uh, book, Give Me a Word, and I want to take another uh, saying from St. Anthony the Great, uh, the father of monasticism, who I mentioned yesterday. So, here it says this. Somebody asked Abba Antony, by observing which precept shall I be well-pleasing to God? Each one of us wants to be well-pleasing to God. So here someone is asking this of St. Anthony. By observing which precept, which teaching, shall I be well-pleasing to God? The elder answered, Observe what I am telling you. Always have God before your eyes wherever you go. This is the first teaching. Always have God before your eyes wherever you go. Whatever you are doing, have the testimony from Holy Scripture to hand. So this is the second thing we learn here. And thirdly, wherever you are living, do not be in a hurry to move away. Observe these three precepts and you will be saved. Again, this is what Abba Antony taught. Observe what I am telling you. Always have God before your eyes wherever you go. Whatever you are doing, have the testimony from Holy Scripture to hand. Wherever you are living, do not be in a hurry to move away. Observe these three precepts, 
and you will be saved. Again, very beautiful, practical teachings from this great elder and saint of the early church, Abba Anthony the Great. So what can we learn practically today from what St. Anthony suggests here to this person? So the first teaching that St. Anthony gives is to always have God before your eyes wherever you go. This is so important. Our lives are busy, as I have mentioned. We have so many distractions, and the distractions come all the time. You know, (laughs) this instrument, yes, we all have them, right? And uh, it's almost like they're hooked to our hips, and sometimes I wonder, you know, how children, when they are born, they're now born with these electronic um, uh, devices. You know, I saw a, an image once on, on YouTube of this little baby with an iPad. And the iPad had, uh, uh, sorry, not an iPad. Uh, the, the child had a magazine in front of them. Their parents had given them this magazine to look through to keep them busy. And what was this very young child doing with this magazine? He was actually trying to pinch the pages, thinking that it was an electronic instrument. This is how the world is is changing so so much and so rapidly. But, you know, hardly any, any of us now can do without our phones and electronics and iPads. I guess it is what it is. But sometimes it can become a distraction, yes? It can become a distraction because now you can get notifications, you know, things that may be disturbing that can come on your phones or on your iPad instantaneously, you know, disturbing news, If you are, you know, uh, logged in or subscribed to news agencies and, you know, most of the news that you see is, you know, troubling and disturbing to our hearts. And it makes us perhaps to forget about God for an instant or for a while. And uh, so many times you're just on our phone and we're scrolling through Facebook and Twitter and Instagram Uh, And this is what occupies uh, our mind and any spare moment that we have. But here, St. Anthony is telling us something different that we should do. Yes? He says to always have God before your eyes wherever you go. So even if we can't do without our phones, but maybe if we can subscribe to... uh, Orthodox messages that could pop up on our phone regularly that would then bring us always our thoughts back to have God before our eyes at all time and not to let the distractions of the world, whatever it be, the electronics or you know billboards that are uh, all over the place on highways that may be distracting during your time in the car, put on a podcast, put a uh, listen to an audio book, something that will be edifying, something that will be uplifting, something that you can discuss when you go home with your husband, with your wife, with your children. How much difference that would make in your day and bring you so much peace and calm, I think. So l- let us really take uh, seriously This beautiful advice is from Abba Anthony uh, today. Always have God before your eyes wherever you go. Wherever you go, take God with you. Yesterday I mentioned a beautiful short prayer, the arrow prayer, the Jesus prayer. My Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And you can repeat this hundreds of times throughout the day in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. It will become a permanent part of your daily living. Just remembering the name of Jesus Christ will purify your mind and heart and soul and bring you so much peace amongst all of the distractions that we have on a daily basis. And then, 
St. Anthony continues to say this, Whatever you are doing, have the testimony from Holy Scripture to hand. How important is this? And I want to read to you a few verses from the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. I love these verses, actually. And this is what it says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Yes, indeed. I wish each family, every person, every one of us would take these words so seriously. How to have the word of God always in front of us. Many times I would enter people's homes and uh, want to read the Bible with them, and sometimes they scurry around trying to look for where their Bibles are, or quickly dust, uh, removing the dust because it has not been read for so long. But let the Word of God live inside of you. Let it be alive inside of you. Uh, and to have Bibles that are opened, that are read, and more importantly, or just as importantly, that they are lived, that you live by the words of the Bible every day in your life. Very, very important. And so here, you know, uh, this important word diligently, teaching the word of God diligently to your children. You are the first educators of your children. You have a, a critical role to play in the spiritual nurturing of your children on a daily basis. And this spiritual nurturing can take many different paths. Obviously, yes, sitting down as a family and reading the scriptures and praying together is critical on a daily basis. We find time for everything else in our life, and yet when it comes to this part, many times we do away with it, and that's to our detriment. But this education process with our children can take place even kicking a ball in the park or over a cup of tea or coffee, uh, just in a general discussion that you can always bring up religious and spiritual topics with your children. It doesn't always have to be in a formal setting because education, in my opinion, can take place in many, many settings. You could be sitting out in a, on a sunny day. At the moment, we're going through a heat wave in, South, in Southern California with temperatures reaching up to uh, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, Celsius that must be hitting close to 50, um, and the many warnings about uh, conserving energy and whatever. But you could be sitting out on a nice day, and you could be watching ants building their homes or moving food around, and you could learn so much from just a simple ant and how energetic they are, how they are working so diligently, and so we should do the same to be diligent in our spiritual life. So, yes, wherever you go, have the testimony from Holy Scripture at hand. In the, in the car, you could listen to an audio of the Scriptures, of the Bible. If you're in a bus or somewhere quiet, have your Bible with you that you can open and, and read um, as much as you can to bring that peace to your day. And finally, he says, wherever you are living, do not be in a hurry to move away. Observe these three precepts and you will be saved. So what does he mean by this? Or how could we apply that uh, to us today about wherever you are living? 
do not be in a hurry to move away. I think for us, we, we could take it as, you know, be content with what you have. Many times society and uh, uh, advertising that is, you know, we are bombarded with it everywhere. In fact, you know, if you go and search for a particular thing, and then if you have a Facebook account, be sure 100% you'll find advertising throwing your way about what you were Googling or what you were searching for online. And they will just keep on bombarding you with this same advertising time and time again, trying to convince you to buy things. So I think the lesson here, the third lesson from St. Anthony is don't give in to this. Be content with what you have. Be happy. Be thankful to God for the many gifts and blessings that he actually gives to us um, on a daily basis. Um, so those, I think, are three beautiful lessons that we can learn from St. Anthony today. To have God always before us and to remember him and also to put scripture in front of us at all times. And thirdly, to be content with all the gifts and blessings that God gives to us. Have a blessed day. Be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And God be with you all, hopefully, to see you tomorrow. Glory be to God forever. Amen.